Hello everyone and thank you to those who are going to be joining us today for our wonderful live with Jen Muir from Connected Parenting. Of course, today's expert live is going to be thanks to our partners over at Lego Duplo because we know how important the power of play truly is for our little one's growth and development. So I'm just going to be connecting with Jen right now. So just give me one second. Get you on here Jen I can see you there if I can get you normally we catch up in person but um, Jen's a busy bee and doing all sorts of things and we thought we'd just connect this way how are you Jen hi how are you Emmy I'm good I'm all right a bit um, frazzled I made a last minute decision to go to the bathroom so I was just running through this place because <laughs> I thought I want to be able to sit still and really concentrate on everything you're going to be covering today how's your morning been it's good, really good. How about, you? How about yours? Busy? Yeah, busy, busy. So um, ready to take on all of your fabulous tips because I know that you always share so much valuable information. Even though we do this so many times together, I always take something new away um, with me. And yes. I've actually got one of my team members in town and um, he's staying somewhere else tonight, but he stayed at my house last night. And oh my gosh, I could have used you this morning. Like it was just <laughs> wild. <laughs> My kids were pear-shaped. They were like so into their creative play, which is gorgeous, but they're just, yeah, they were, they were quite out of control. <laughs> Your kids are so good with their creative play. <laughs> yeah, we're never short on that, that's for sure. So, Jen, I was just saying, of course, today we're, we're always, every time we catch up, we love talking about the power of play. And obviously, thanks to our friends over at Lego Duplo, which both you and I adore the products of course yeah. um but with this um session we're going to be talking about a lot about questions and the yeah. hows and the whys and i think it seems really simple when you read it but actually when you're sitting on that floor trying to play with your little one it doesn't always come naturally i know for me it no. doesn't when i'm tired no i mean for some of us play is instinctual you know there are yeah. some like you know sometimes you see a parent and you think wow they're so good at that and for some of us we have to really um learn how to play again so that we mm -hmm. can be present for our kids but i think the biggest thing is to know that really for our kids play you know when it's with us it's about time together you yes. know and really what they're getting from us is that beautiful connection and it's time with us and that's why the questions will come up because it's a way of connecting and and finding out about their world and keeping us on the floor for longer no doubt hundred <laughs> percent if, if they could have it their way it would be play 24 7 and we'd be there you know? wouldn't that be nice i would take that over housework any day that's for sure <laughs> Now, it's not always easy, I guess, like I was saying, when you're tired and, you know, I think as much as, like, it comes naturally for some, I love when you talk about how to, um, you know, get their, why a curious question so important. And I think if you have this little checklist in your head, it does help because some of the content you wrote for us recently, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, that is a game changer. Like, just some of those yeah. little prompting moments, um, which I know you're going to yes. cover off in session um but first yeah. of all let's start about why their curious questions are so important i think uh I, well you know we know that for kids it's through those questions that they're learning about their world so mm -hmm. you know from the minute our little babies come into this world they're learning at the most extraordinary rate we know that those first five years are so critical in terms mm -hmm. of them learning not just you know spatial skills fine motor skills gross motor skills, but emotional skills, you know, all yeah. of those EQ skills that we want to foster. And so it's through those questions and they will come up during play because often we are relaxed and they are relaxed. And play mm -hmm. is that magic sort of time where, you know, our kids can learn so much more, everything can slow down and it really is in play. Like none of us have ever really um, learned well with someone lecturing us, have we? You know, right. we want to teach our kids to be <laughs> kind but it's actually this incredible sort of energy that happens during play where they can learn like the most incredible. And that's how kids learn best. If they're having yeah. fun and it doesn't often look like much is happening, 
but a lot is. So yes, the questions that they're asking, um, look, it's through those questions that they're working out all the little pieces. So the questions will come up at just the right time. And I think the catch for us is maybe in the way that we answer it um, yes. and trying not to answer too much too fast. It's often about holding back more than uh -huh. answering everything like, why is the sky blue? You know, I'll just answer it. It's yes. often about holding back and, and asking them some questions back. I love that. Is that what you, what do you call it again, where you do the tennis match? Yes. <laughs> I just think so, tennis match in my head. <laughs> you know, we've all had those moments where we talk to kids and we go into a lecture like we just really want to teach them something. It would be so good if we just knew this. And we just see their eyes glaze over and we've lost them. And definitely when it comes to play and with questions, we really want to do the serve and return, which is the tennis match. And it's really just <laughs> like that where, you know, our child serves up the question. And we actually want to pause, reflect, and we serve something back. And sometimes we, will, we want to serve only just enough to prompt mm -hmm. them to do more. So we want to serve back, you know, just, you know, what makes you ask that? I'm, I'm curious. You know, we might serve back some wonder. We might say, you know, what do you think the answer is? And then we're going to pause and we're going to give our child enough time to kind of work out, mm -hmm. you know, what they're thinking about that and serve it back. When we do this process, yes, we're really allowing curiosity to develop and all kinds of things in terms of their brains and their, th their ability to um, work things out for themselves. But it's actually just really connection building because they feel very seen and we're giving them enough space without us taking over, which is so tempting because we've got the fully formed brain and, you know, sometimes we, we know the answers, we just want to take yeah. over. Or you could go all severe and he just gives this full-on detailed explanation. I'm like, it's just going over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, we've got it. Yeah. I remember it was yourself and I think also when we've done the, um, the lives with our um, sexuality and health educator, you know, she always says, ask them first what they already know. Like if it's a big yeah. question, ask them to find out actually where they're at. Yeah, look, and particularly if you get a tricky question, no <laughs> harm in buying yourself some time with the beautiful throwback, what exactly were you hoping to know by that? And it can really surprise you. So when you do get kind of tricky questions where you think, wow, I didn't think we were ready to talk about that yet, you want to yeah. really buy yourself some time to calm. Um, and because we want to, we want the biggest thing with our kids asking questions, one of the things they're practicing is being able to come to us with problems. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, it's through these little questions or big questions that they're learning how to come to us. And we want them coming to us, you know, when they're 13 or 14 and 15 as well. So we're mm -hmm. also setting up a relationship where every question they ask is safe, where we're willing to sort of take that time and allow them to let us know what they already know and exactly what they do want to know. Um, and yeah. we get curious with our kids. It's sort of um, joining them in their curiosity rather than just serving up the answers. I love that. And also too, yeah, like I just think you're right. It's for, for, for me, I've always wanted to make sure that I am that place that my kids can come to. And I'm starting to see it with my seven-year-old, you know, really you know, coming to me with certain problems and mum, I thought you might have some ideas about how to help me. And I think that does come through showing the interest. No question is a silly question. And um, I like know. Said, and yeah. how good is that feeling when they yeah. come to you? I, my um, my 13 year old came to me the other night and I was busy and I'd fobbed off a few of my kids because I was really busy. I was like, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. He came in, he said, mum, I'm a bit overwhelmed. And I just like tools down. I was like, wow. <laughs> Because oh, wow. he just, you know, it's just so good because teenagers don't come to you as often and it's so important yeah. that we we stop with those with those moments. That is so great. They say that is the first thing once they can recognise how they're feeling and their emotions, that is like all you can ask Woo. for. It. <laughs> you nailed it, Jen. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, now, like I said, said before, like these how and why questions, you know, they can come at you quite hard and fast and I'm very guilty of throwing down a response. I'd love to know, and I've written down some questions today that I'd love for you to um, come back at. I just thought, what would I want to know? How do you appreciate the hows and the whys? How do you appreciate them? I think by just stopping and connecting by you might 
turn, come alongside your child, touch your child. It's all through body language that we're, I guess the way we appreciate them is we listen. You know, yeah. if we, if we, you know, and look, we can't always, and I do want to clarify that if, um, for some of us, some of our kids are very curious. They're asking just, I mean, if anyone, I don't know if you've had a child that seems to never stop asking questions, you it's know, that can get pretty it's exhausting. It can get pretty exhausting. And so, you know, I don't want anyone feeling like if they don't answer, give time to every question that they're failing as a parent. It's not at all like that. But it's, I guess it's sort of stopping and noticing. And we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, giving your children sometimes just nine minutes where you really go in two feet in and you really get in there. And then it's often that the questions will come up because we're giving them time. So yes. I think how we appreciate questions is really by showing with our whole body that we're interested. That. And that can be... That can be a real challenge when we're driving the car or we're cooking the dinner and we, we might just answer without kind of really showing, hey, I hear you, I see you. And, and I think that's, you know, we don't have to have the answers. We can say to our kids, let's Google it. You know, yeah. we, we don't always have to know, but I think we're stopping and showing them when we can. Um, I see you. I see that you're curious about this. And um, one of the best tips I have for kind of giving yourself space when you either don't know the answer or you weren't tuned in is yes. actually just repeat back what's happening. So always just commentate what's happening. I can see you're really curious about X, Y, Z. Oh, wow. I can see that's happening. And that gives you time to process. And sometimes you might instantly go, I think, because often kids will use play to play out themes that they're struggling with. So a child that's toilet yes. training might kind of play that out through play. We might stop, notice that and say, you know, I'm curious. I'm wondering if you're thinking about this or you're playing mm -hmm. about this. And we can bring up tricky topics through that as well, through our curiosity as well. I love that. And that is interesting because all of that potty talk, it does come out from time to time, the poo-poos and the wee-wees. And you, well, just remind, right. <laughs> you just reminded me that Nunu, obviously, who has some speech delays, she started saying why at the end of everything when I say something, why? And, I, and it really caught me off guard because I'm not used to her saying that. So I am taking that moment to stop and let her know that I, I do see her. Um, yes. But I obviously keep my answers quite short and minimal. She doesn't need the full, um, you know, the full explanation at this stage. But, yeah, it's interesting. Yes. I really think they go through a stage where they start asking why. <laughs> yeah, how gorgeous. Yeah, it's very, very cute. Um, now, Jen, I'd, I'd love for you, because you did an article for us that was about the five simple ways to break down big questions into curious answers. And I think, you know, that in itself is really helpful because sometimes, like you say just then, you know, that you are acknowledging. But I want you to go into a little bit more detail. I know you talk about this wondering out loud and I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd love for you to share a little bit more on that. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the best things we can do when we get asked a question is just acknowledge or talk out loud about the fact, oh, it sounds like you're asking this. And this is a reflective way. I mean, that's just showing we're listening. So kind of listening skills often is, you know, I'm checking, is this what you're asking is one way to do it? Or we might um, sort of acknowledge, it sounds like you really want to know about this. And you know, and again, let me say sometimes just say it's not the right time for that question. It's okay to say, I okay. really want to talk about this with you. I'm so excited. We can set aside some time later and we can, we can mm -hmm. do that later. If it's just not the right time, because for whatever reason you can't do it. So you put another two kids screaming at you at the same time. That's right. <laughs> you know, sometimes your child's like, why is this happening? And you're like, I so want to help you with that. Like it's this thing you've been like, yes, I can see we really need to do this, but oh my goodness, I need to put out some fires first. So yes. absolutely. Um, so we want to kind of acknowledge it, but then, you know, and you might say, I'm checking, were you wondering about this? And as you said earlier, Emia, you might say, what do you already know about that? You know, and mm. often they might be, sometimes our kids are actually trying to let us know something they know. So they might ask it as a question, but actually they're like, hey, I'm just trying to let you know I've learned something. You know, yes. I know this thing. And, and, and it might be like, you know, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I love that, you know, that you know that. So it's kind of checking what they mean. And it's slowing down and doing that serve and return and pausing. Then really because our temptation is to answer the question. You know, we, we know the answer often, but kids are going to learn so much better and they're going to feel so much more satisfaction and, and they're going to develop all those beautiful problem-solving skills if we step back and kind of help them or guide them or give them what we talk about is just enough. 
So just yeah. enough support. You don't want to go, well, you tell me the answer and have your child go, or oh, forget it. You know, yeah. like, why would I come to you with a question? Um, yeah. But at the same time, if we can use that beautiful concept of wonder um, mm. to say, you know, I wonder what, why do you think, you know, whatever it is, you know, why do you <laughs> think snow freezes? Um, yeah. Whatever it is that we're wondering about, we might really wonder out loud. The reason wonder is so fantastic for kids, it's really non-threatening. So when we say, well, what do you think the answer is? I feel much more backed into a corner. But yes. when we wonder, we're actually allowing us all to feel like nobody's on the spot. You know what I mean? Like it just frees us up. So wonder is, uh, it is one of the most powerful tools in parenting. Like, yeah. <laughs> hands I love down. It. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing you can use wonder for sort of while we're talking about it is, you know, when just say something goes wrong, our child is having a moment where they're not feeling as resilient as they might, or mm -hmm. they're frustrated, they're trying to build, you know, with their Lego bricks, they're trying to build something and their tower's falling over or something's just not working the way they hoped, or maybe it's to do with sharing with, you know, we're, we're playing and we're sharing with siblings or with friends. Sometimes as parents, we want to come in and say, hey, you share, you know, I'll, I'll just take over. But sometimes if we can step back and come in with this really neutral approach of, I wonder, wow, you know, there's, there's all these um, toys here and how are we going to share them? I wonder what you guys think we can do about this problem where we all want the exact same yeah. green Lego brick. <laughs> um, always. Which is always the way. Always the way. We just all want that one. Um, so when we wonder, again, we're in this non-threatening position and we allow our kids, kids this incredible opportunity to problem solve. And they love the opportunity and it can surprise you the solutions they can come up with. A child that was a second ago was saying, no, nah, it's mine, I'm not sharing, can suddenly go, well, we could take turns. And you think, yes. yes. Just like reframing it in that moment can make such a huge difference. You know, it just it takes the pressure off. I mean, no child ever goes well backed into a corner. And that's the no. problem, you know, we're, we're adults, we're bigger, we're stronger. And so sometimes when we're like, you do this instantly, the claws are out, they're in that corner. Yeah. And so when we come in with wonder, you know, not only does it encourage that curiosity that they've got, because we're encouraging curiosity with more curiosity. Like I'm curious about your curiosity and now we're all curious together. So yeah. that, that helps, but then also it really helps us with those tricky situations that come up. And sometimes those tricky situations, and I'm glad you mentioned the sharing thing because I was at a dinner recently with my girlfriend who's just had another baby. So she was caught up with the baby and she was really panicking because her daughter just did not know how to share. And yeah. she said to me, I always just want to dive in and tell them, well, don't do that. You've got to give that to that person and you've got to share. And I said, but she doesn't understand how yet. And, and I yeah. love that. If we can come in and say, you know, I wonder what we can do about what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, kids, we, we, we overestimate what developmentally they're capable of. And little kids, they just, they don't have that part of the brain yet that allows them to know how to share. They're just not capable of it. And it's because they're working on all these other stuff. Like the amount of growth is just, you know, it blows your mind, literally yeah. how their minds are growing. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, it does make a difference when we can come in from that more neutral approach of, hey, I'm on your team. And it's so normal at three that you're not great at sharing. So I'm going to help you out by I can help you out. I'll stop you from snatching or hitting. But yeah. we can wonder together, how can we make this fair? Because... You know, our friend, yeah. she's having, she's not having the best time, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And or su making a suggestion in that moment if they can't come up with it on their own. And, yeah, that's what we ended up doing. We were like, oh, it was all it was using the power of wonder. You know, wonder. I wonder if yeah. we can line all of these up together to get to the end. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, very powerful, Jen. I love it. <laughs> Um, now, um, you, you've pretty much covered the five simple ways. I'm just checking on my notes again because yes. you spoke about keeping the answers brief as well to allow, allow more to go back with. Yeah, I mean, um, I think just with that, yeah. just stopping yourself from we want – sometimes we want to take it further. I mean, you talked about Sabir earlier, but sometimes we want to <laughs> take it further. We just have so much knowledge we want to give. And we've got to remember to keep our kids interested. We've got to keep waiting for that serve and return. So if they're, they're no longer serving back, hey, I want to know more, they've ended that game of tennis and <laughs> you've got to stop. Yeah. So again, by looking for that return serve, that's how we know if they're still engaged. Yeah. Okay. Love that. And, and again, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it 
it's so funny sometimes i listen into sabir and i thought god bless him and then when they can repeat it he gets so proud of himself see they were listening i'm like well how much did they understand i'm not so sure <laughs> but it's very very cute and he did tell me once that papa's a lot smarter than i am because he tells her he he teaches her so many things i said isn't that wonderful i love that <laughs> oh i love that too teach you at bath time and bedtime and dinner time too <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing because I know he's on here watching. <laughs> I just saw his name pop up. Um, we love having a bit of banter. Now, you spoke a little bit about, you know, when play isn't working. Um, and I, I, and about the, you know, the sharing and everyone wanting the same thing. But I wanted to mention too, I always find in that moment, my kids always want to gravitate and sit on my lap. They want that physical connection. And I know that you talk about, how a lot of our communication is nonverbal. I don't know whether we could just touch on that a little bit because you did you did talk a little bit about the touching, but some of the tips you've given yeah. me in the past about the hair scruffs and the high fives and the, you know, the Totally, totally. So when things are not working for our children, they need to feel connected and calm before they can get into that problem solving state of mind so often we want to rush them don't we we want to kind of go we get want to get you to that place where you're happy again where you're problem solving but our kids are meant to have all of those emotions and really kind of understanding how kids feel connected with us can help so knowing that mm -hmm. it is through touch and sometimes you know our child can look really upset and we're there feeling like sometimes our instinct is even is to step back um, and we want to step into that and physically open our body. Um, I can't show you here, but just opening your palms makes such a big difference because, and this is the biggest thing. So we know that children take in less of our words because their brains are still developing. Um, mm. But 90% but but of communication is nonverbal. And particularly when, and this is the kicker, when our kids are unregulated. And so that means when they're sad, when they're mad, even when they're super excited by a new situation or a new play date or something that's happening, um, that means their little brains are unregulated. And so they're taking in our visual cues or our physical connection with them much more than our words. So yes. our words are a lot less powerful than our touch. And sometimes we don't need mm. to say a lot, you know. And I love that your kids are coming to you in those mm. moments because they're just letting you know this is what I need. And our kids do show us physically. They either look at us, you know, or they come to us and they put their little hands up. And when we respond with that same in kind um, mm. just enough support and sometimes they need you know just for us just say they're having a tricky situation with a friend just us to be there alongside them and we might commentate as well mm, this is a tricky situation yeah mm. and we're not giving them the answers we're just they're physically giving them that connection filling that emotional cup so that they've got enough settledness to go back and tackle that for themselves yes and i even noticed actually something happened the other day with my seven-year-old and she almost almost curled her up like a little baby and just cuddled her and we didn't talk it was just that little hug and she just loosened up and then off she went again and it was so cute and i do notice that sometimes kids do like to act like the baby or play like the baby and maybe that is their way of saying they want to be you know they want some extra cuddles Look, it really is. We know, we innately know with a, a newborn baby, we know innately that it cries, we pick, we scoop them up, we, we rock, we stroke, we shush, we pat. And then our kids start to talk and walk and we sort of think they don't need the same physical help to regulate, but actually they need all of those same things. Um, and, and even as adults, if you are really sad and a friend hugs you, think about what you do. You often yes. will move, you'll rock a bit. And you will stroke your partner. You know, yes. we absolutely need that same soothing. And yes. our kids, particularly children under six. So we know that kids under six can't regulate alone. And it is through that physical touch and connection, or at least a caregiver alongside you showing you, I can see you're having a hard time. I know what that feels like. And I'm here with you. Yeah, I love that. Oh, Jan, see, up with the good stuff. Now, we all <laughs> want a resilient child. What are some we ways? Sure we, do. Because we can hear, we hear this all the time, and I think obviously you know we talk about toddlers a lot and preschoolers, but as they're you know even preparing them as they get older and, and heading into school. So resilience. I mean, when when does this kind of start, and what type of things can we do through play to help build resilience? We can do so much. Like play is absolutely how we build resilience. It's it's really it's it's really all about it. But I guess with resilience, I want to point out that. Re the building of resilience looks very much like a lack of resilience. Mm. 
So it is this crazy thing where, you know, you might think, you know, because we've come from a really different way of parenting in the past where children should be seen and not heard. And yeah. so if you were unresilient, I, AKA you had a big feeling, you probably got sent to your room. And now yeah. we're not, we know we're really trying to do that differently. And we know through tons and tons, like 70 years of research that we build resilience through allowing our kids to demonstrate having big feelings, having us sit with them in those feelings and work through them. And yeah. play is just the most fantastic way to do that because things go wrong in play. You know, yeah. we have we love play, but play like life doesn't always go our way. There's only one thing of that that we've got to share. <laughs> our, our creations get trampled. Uh, things don't work out the way we hope or we lose a game. Mm -hmm. And these are the most fantastic opportunities to well, we're teaching resilience by literally allowing our kids to experience those opportunities mm -hmm. to lose and to be frustrated. And it's the same with our, we go back to our serve and return here, Emmy, because yes. our instinct, particularly when our kids are unhappy, I want to fix it, I want to solve it. So if my child's Lego tower falls over, you know, mm -hmm. I want to just go, oh, like, oh, mummy, I'll fix it. Like, I'll make it better and then there'll be no crying. I just want to make everybody happy. That's our instinct as parents. It makes sense because we don't want to see our kids upset. But yes. in actual fact, if we can pause and say, oh, no, and just think in your head, this is an opportunity. Yep. Oh, I've lost you, Jen. Your sound's gone for a minute. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. I think yep. sounds back. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Got you now. Um, yes. So this is an opportunity when when it goes wrong to name what's happening for your child. So it's through, it's literally teaching our kids this emotional vocab that really yeah. helps our children to build that resilience. And what we're doing in that moment is we're taking something from the emotional part of the brain, which our kids are, yeah. they have that in spades. What they don't have is the thinking part of the brain. When we articulate feelings, we're moving something from that emotional part of the brain to the thinking part of the brain. And that's how the thinking part of the brain comes online. And then yeah. we can problem solve. So we're yeah. practicing that with our kids. If we just solve it for them, they didn't learn that skill. So yeah. how do we create a resilient child is all this practice of letting them, letting their tower fall and not fixing them for them, but yeah. being with them alongside them and saying, oh, that's so disappointing. I wonder what we, I wonder <laughs> yeah. what we can do. <laughs> I did Sorry. that the other day. I tried to move a beautiful Lego, Ishks onto the smaller Lego, and the other two are on you, the Duplo. But you did not. It broke, and it was this big extravagant thing that <laughs> took us so long. Oh, my gosh, she never let me let it down. But like you say, I didn't fix it for her, and I just apologised. And I said, Mummy was yeah. trying to move it off the floor onto the table, and it fell to pieces. And, yeah, I think I think... Like a such and you just acknowledge that emotion. You're like, you, yeah. I, can, I would be feel, so I disappointed yeah. if that happened to me. I get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the whole winning and losing thing, which you touched on, which I think is so powerful as well, especially as they get older and they're going to daycare and they're going to school is just that practice with an adult, like you were saying, you know, because um, I know we've done winning and losing content before for Lego, which I've also loved as well. So, yeah. yes, <laughs> all this practice I need. <laughs> All this practice. And it's the same thing because when we, um, you know, when our kids win, we want them to be good winners. And so it's usually just about commentating out loud always, you know, like this is what I see happening and I'm looking at, you know, our friend's face or look at my face, it's my turn. You know, yeah. turn-taking even, um, one of the best ways with our kids is actually it might feel easier to just let them have all the turns because um, yeah. they would take all the turns if they could. That's where they're at. And sometimes, yes. you know, it's our job to say, hey, it's my turn. And it's really about giving them that chance to experience the disappointment of what it's like to take turns before they wind up at school and they've never had a go at it. So we yeah. really do want to kind of, um, yeah, you and Thank play you. is just the best way because their brains are in the right state for it. Yeah, love it. Now, Jen. Um, mm -hmm. So we spoke a little bit about resilience. What about self-expression? Okay, yes. so I did write this down because we want this for our kids too, I guess. We want them to be themselves and to express themselves. And, you know, I've got three kids, you've got four boys. <laughs> and they're all so different. I mean, we were on holidays recently together and they, they're they such different personalities. Is this something that you start to see come out in play and do you tap into each one individually in different ways? Yeah, I'd, love, I'd yeah. love for you to share a little bit more on that. 
you know, I think the biggest thing in terms of self-expression and, you know, creativity and all those beautiful things, we want our children to know it's okay to be their own person. You know, the, the simple line would be let kids be kids, you know, okay. like really get out of the way. And as adults, again, you know, sometimes, you know, we know the right way to do things. So we know that you don't colour a horse pink or that you build this, you know, Lego set in this particular way. But it's actually getting out of the way and letting our kids express themselves creatively and letting them lead that play and guide us and not correcting too much, um, you know, if that makes sense. We really want to kind of let them be themselves because kids innately know how to be expressive and creative. And actually yeah. it's kind of us with our set ideas that can get in the way. So often yeah. it's about us stepping back. I mean, what mum hasn't wanted to intervene on a craft project where, you know, you're yeah. like, let me just do it for you. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever that done ginger, was just gingerbread recently. house making. <laughs> Have you ever done gingerbread house making? And you're like, no, 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 no I, can, I, can do, I can do it better than you. <laughs> I see clear but, of anything like that, Jen. <laughs> But actually, you know, if we can step back, and I know that you guys do this beautifully because I've seen the photo <laughs> evidence of your house, but it's actually getting out of the way and letting our kids just be crazy and use toys in different ways and, and yes. move them to different spots so they don't have to do everything according to the instructions, you know, and I think that creativity. Yeah. Um, and then I think we, as we've sort of talked about earlier, just empowering their own decision-making by not, overdoing it it's kind of yep. like they say what should i do and we say mm, i wonder this is tricky i wonder what you are going to do i can't wait to see what you decide to do and we're yep. really allowing them as scary little scary bits of having a go and and all of that will encourage them to be confident to express themselves and, yes. and continue to do that as they grow and it's, and it's okay to make mistakes while you're trying things out. And, you know, it, it starts as early as, so for those that don't have the communication skills, I remember watching Nunu, again, who was a little bit later to develop in those mm. fine skills. Yeah. And you do want to jump in and show her how to click the bricks together. But I mm. remember seeing her and she was sitting there, you know, persisting, trying to work out which way it clicked together. And, yeah, you just need to stop and pause for a minute and allow her to go through that process because that's how they learn. And I then guess. what yeah. happened when she finally got them together? If you, if you sit yeah. back, yeah. for me, the magic is in that. Like yeah. if, we, if we just click those bricks together... Um, she she hasn't yeah. learned that's one thing but yeah. the biggest thing is it's it's what we don't understand or what we lose track of in this world where we, we're trying to make everything sort of okay for our kids we want to make them happy but if we can step back and actually just be with our kids while they do a little bit of struggle and i'm not not talking about letting your child just wail because they really <laughs> need your help but but like little nunu just like watching her she's happy with her struggle yes. and maybe even a bit frustrated you can say oh this is tricky isn't it and then yes. next thing she works it out and her little face yeah. just got yeah. and and it's that feeling of i did it i yes. did it and then as parents were able to say you did it you yeah. you worked out i saw how hard you worked at that and again yeah. that that ability of us to kind of let them know that we saw you were struggling and you weren't sure you were going to work it out and you did look how look how much you're you're you've you're doing great at that you know and that's so good for our kids as well yeah i know i even got very excited as well but i love that how you talk about narrating through it because that's something i should probably do more of i i think i'm good at letting them sit back and letting them do something and you know asking the questions but yeah i think the narrating is so they're understanding and processing yeah the process of what they're going through to learn and i think they let you know if they're really happy um we don't have to say much we can like we Often it's just us quietly sitting by our kids. That is the best way to support. You know, when we're looking at children's needs, they need support for exploration. That's sort of what we're doing through all of this stuff. It's, it's us just supporting them. But often, you know, often it's narrating if they're looking for help. But if they're not looking, you know, we're really just sitting very quietly by and just observing quietly. And they know we're there. Like yeah. they might not be looking at you, but they know when you're observing. Exactly. And like you say, like, and you touched on it very briefly at the beginning of this because I think sometimes it can feel overwhelming and you can think, how on earth am I going to get time to sit with my kid and play when I've got all the housework? I mean, I had three under three and a half. You had all your four boys close together. Mm. 
And it does feel impossible at times when you're overwhelmed with everything you've got on your plate. But I love what you say about just jumping down and that, you know, that 10 minutes. It's little is, moments. Yeah, it can buy you so it's, much more time. <laughs> oh, it's little moments. And it's knowing that, you know, often when our kids, it's when we encourage that and we do like, we sit with them to teach them how to play. We be with them in concentrated moments. And then we increasingly, we move away. And it's very important for kids to have those moments of independent play as well. Yes. And then we use, we use that kind of opportunity to connect and kind of notice what they're doing. Um, mm. Even before we need to move them on to the next activity, we're like, wow, I just love what you've done here. And this is so awesome. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is, and, yeah. and kids just go so much better when we connect in first. Don't they? Don't they? Make, makes a huge difference. And I always remember too, because I'm, I used to like my, uh, you know, minimal lounge room and everything nice and tidy. I was never going to have a in there. And I remember someone said to me once, don't even worry about getting a playroom because they're going to be where, they're going to want to be wherever you are. So I learned very quickly that I needed to get my little baskets and containers of the Lego Duplo and all the other toys at hand so that they could be there on the floor near me. You could recognise when to jump down, have a little, you know, moment of connection and then keep going with the housework. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Although Born of the days of the perfect house. <laughs> Yeah, I wish my my uh, my kids could pack away like yours do because I've seen your boys are very good at putting their things back in their their boxes. I, poor Marcus this morning looked around my house and the, the toys were just everywhere. Any hot tips, Jen? What am I doing? Am I connecting before telling them to pack it away? <laughs> Definitely, you're connecting first. You are one like game. You use Use humour and a game, and don't get back them into that corner. If you look at a child and say, "Pick that up." Mm -mm, it's never going to happen. No child on earth says, yeah, sure. So yeah. it's really about what I do. I might come in and say, I wonder <laughs> who can pack up the most toys in 10 minutes. I'm yeah. counting or I join in and model it and I'll be like, yeah. it's time to pack away. I'm going to go first. I wonder how many you guys can get in. But really, yeah. it's humour. And the other thing you can do is say, you know, I reckon if you guys would clean up this whole room and I came back, in fact, no, nah, you can't. No, nah, there's no way you two can clean up this room. No way. Go and, then, and they'll be like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. And then you go, okay, well, I'm going to go. I don't think you can do it. And then when you come back, you've got to fall over because you're in shock because they actually clean up their room. <laughs> the kids love a challenge. They love humour. They love songs. And it's all very yeah. cheesy, but... It's really all of that that makes the difference. Yes. And then, you know, we model it until they can join in. We just believe, you know, I know you're a great packer away. I know you're going to join yes. in one day. I'm going to pack. I'm just going to model it. And, um, and they do. They just get on board. They get it. And I think consistency is probably important with that because I think I've been inconsistent in the past based on how much I've got going on. But... Um, I love what you said about the song because um, Nunu's OT does that with her. I see her when she gives her warning for packing away and they sing this beautiful little song together and it's just become like a ritual. So, um, yeah, I think the, the song the stuff The song is helps. I mean, if you go into any preschool, they will always use a song to move kids from one thing to the next. And That's so awesome. songs can help with all of those transition points. Excellent. Jen, love it. So many fabulous tips as always. Now, was there anything else I have missed that you would love to share or do you think we've gone really juicy here and we've given I think everything? We've, I think we've covered it. We've, we've given Almost. lots of tips around, you know, building that resilience and, and mostly just trusting to that kids know what they're doing with play. We want to yeah. really get out of the way. I think that's the key point. And then it takes time for you as a parent that don't expect that, you know, you're going to be the same every single day. You don't need to be, you know, like a TV presenter that's got the energy all the time because some days it is harder than others. Cut yourself that's right. some <laughs> Totally. And know that, the, that it's that independent play that kids are building so much creativity and all that problem solving. Sometimes they need us nearby, but sometimes they really need to have a go on their own. And that's really yeah. important too. So, you know, Sometimes people do, they feel like, oh, I'm not giving that older child as much time because there's a new baby in the house. And just know that that's also a really great thing. You know, it's, exactly. it's all good. <laughs>
Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Jen. And of course, for everyone that dipped in and out of this live today, again, never know what the ideal time is for people, but we always will share this to our feed so that you can replay whenever you need to. Um, and of course, to our friends over at Lego Duplo, because both Jen and I, you know, obviously big fans with our little kids, but there is so much wonderful content. Um, Jen's written some articles on the website and the app. We've got video uh, product reviews. So I know Yana's doing the Wild Animals of South America set. And yeah, there's lots of cute video content that Jen's also done with some tiny little people um, that just cute. demonstrates. Yeah, so cute. Demonstrates, you know, some of these things we mentioned about playing and using the, the Lego Duplo as a tool to do that as well. Absolutely. And using, yeah, yeah. Which is <laughs> all right well jen lovely as always to chat and thank you so much for being so generous with your time and your information for everybody and um yeah can't wait till we do the next one me too thank you so much take care have a great afternoon see you everyone bye, bye.